This is Raul. Today I'm going to be taking you through the DOFR 188-1 BBD module, talking about some of the basics about this module uh, and helping you to understand a little bit more about what this particular module has to offer. We're going to be breaking it down into sections, talking about the top section here, uh, dealing with the delay clock and the modulation inputs, uh, talking briefly about the input section and the feedback section, and then also discussing a little bit about the BBD section on the bottom. So to start out with, let's talk about what a BBD is. BBD stands for Bucket Brigade Delay. That's a specific type of analog delay. And the DOFR module actually comes in one, two, three, four, five, six different styles. If you look at the front here, there's uh, six different circles here. There's a 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, and a 4096. The model that you have happens to be indicated by a black dot. So as you can see, this particular module is the 4096 variety. The more stages you have in the BBD, the longer the delay has. The reason I chose this particular one was for a long delay. So that's the one we're looking at today. Okay, moving right along. Um, we're going to go right into the top section here, it's dealing with the delay clock and the modulation section. So to start out with, the delay clock here is actually tied to a high-speed VCO inside the module. Um, all the way at the maximum, which is at 10, this is going to be the fastest that the delay clock will go. And then all the way counterclockwise is going to be the slowest the delay clock will go. What this translates to is on the maximum side, you essentially have no delay happening on your signal at all. And the further you go counterclockwise, the more effect or delay that you're adding to the signal. It's kind of reverse of what I'm used to from audio. Usually you go clockwise to add signal, but in this one it happens to be inverted. So that's something unique to this particular module and just something good to know when you're using it. Okay, so to the left of that, we have the clock out. And the clock out is actually going to send the clock from this setting here out to another BBD module if you'd like to sync two of them together uh, to get kind of complex left-right panning type effects or if you just want to sync two of the modules that you have for whatever effects you're planning. So that's the clock out. To the left of that, this is going to be the polarity switch. But before I explain that, let me pop back over here to CV1. CV1 is where you can modulate or change the rate of the delay clock. So patching something in like an LFO will allow you to, in effect, adjust the delay clock setting dynamically. So if you plug in a sine wave and it's kind of moving up and down, that's kind of my impression of a sine wave, um, it's going to actually move the setting that the delay clock has. And to the right of that, this polarity switch is actually going to affect how the CV is going to affect the delay clock. In the zero position, uh, there is no effect, so it's essentially off. And in the positive position, it's going to affect the delay clock in the positive position fashion. Now what this means is um, as the rate of whatever you're using to modulate here at the CV in goes up, the delay clock will also go up. And as the rate of the LFO goes down, the delay clock setting will also go down. So that's the positive setting. Middle of course off, like we said before. And then the negative setting is actually going to do the opposite of the rate going in. So if the rate going in at CV1 
goes up, the delay clock speed will go down. And if the LFO going in goes down, then the delay clock will go up. And that's your polarity switch for CB1. Moving straight down to the next row, we have another CV input. So just like we had with CV1, you can use this to add another realm of modulation to your delay clock. So if you plug something into here, the modulation is controlled in polarity here by this switch. Again, middle off, left in the negative direction, and plus in the positive direction. Same thing as the top one. So nothing different there. Um, the next little port here is the external clock in. So if we were syncing this particular module to another BBD, this is where we would patch in the external clock. And then this dial right here is going to be what essentially distinguishes this particular row of CV in from the top row of CV in. Um, on the top one, when you add a CV, it just automatically will start adjusting the delay clock rate according to the polarity that you have it set to. On the other hand, the CV2 is going to be controlled in intensity by the setting you have on the dial. So if you just want the CV2 to come in about 50%, you can set it at the 12 o'clock, it's not exactly 12 o'clock, but 12 o'clock position, and then you're actually only getting 50% of the CV2. That's if you just have one input. And then of course, all the way to the right is going to be the maximum amount. So in essence, you would have full control voltage to going to the delay clock. Now, what about if you have both of these patched? What happens then? Well, according to the manual, it says that these two will be summed and then added to the delay clock, depending on the polarity. Now let's talk briefly about the middle section here, the level. Uh, the level section is pretty straightforward. Um, we have audio in. That's where I'm going to start. So this is where you patch your audio. So if you have a sine wave or a square wave, triangle wave, whatever your audio is, even if it's a drum machine and you want to patch it into this module, this is where you're going to patch it. Now, there's another one here underneath it, which initially I thought was so that you could input two audio signals and then somehow they would be maybe 50-50 mixed to the BBD. But I actually, in the manual, it says that this is actually a mini mult. And after testing it, it is in fact a mini mult. So what happens is you plug in your audio in here and then you can use this as an output to your mixer so you can get dry signal and also BBD out from the module. So pretty interesting little little feature of this module. I've not encountered one like that before. And over here on the left, you have a CV out. This CV out is going to be the control voltage out of the high-speed VCO coming from over here. So you have another CV that you can route out to a filter. And actually, according to manual, that's what you want to use this for, is to patch it into the input control voltage of your filter to sort of filter out the noise that is inherent in one of these types of modules. And there you go. So if you needed to send it to more than one filter, you would probably want to run this to a mult and then send it over. Um, also, one thing just to kind of take for what it's worth, according to the manual, if you are going to be patching clock out or external clock in, the manual suggests not to use cables longer than 30 centimeters, because if you do, then what's going to happen is the cable will actually 
act as a low pass filter and you may not get as precise of a clock as you intended. So just good information to know in case you want to try that out. That takes care of our input section. Oh, wait, I actually forgot the level knob. Very important because this is going to determine our sound. So at the zero level, of course, no signal coming in. And then all the way to 10, that's going to be the maximum amount of signal. One thing I found out in the manual, which I hadn't, hadn't read before, um, before doing this little demo or demonstration or description, whatever you want to call it, uh, is according to the dial on Dofer, it says that when you get to about 3 o'clock, and this is a standard just of all A100 modules, uh, the audio signal will start distorting. So that might be something to keep in mind when you are patching in here. If you feel like you're getting a lot of distortion, which tends to happen when you run the delay clock very, very slow, you, you will hear distortion. Um, you may want to back off on the level a little bit to minimize it as much as possible. Because then, in effect, you would be distorting your signal in two places, one at the delay clock and one at the level knob. Moving right along, going to the last section on the bottom, the feedback and mix section. Starting over here on the right, all the way clockwise, we have our feedback at the maximum, and then all the way counterclockwise, we have our feedback at the minimum. So. Where is this feedback coming from? Well, it's actually coming from the row beneath there, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, right below that, of course, that's our mini malt, so we're just gonna move right along to here. Polarity switch here in this row is going to affect how the feedback will be blended back into the BBD signal. So in the positive position, you get a positive mix of the feedback, and in the zero position, it's essentially off, so you're not getting any feedback. And then in the negative position, you're getting a negative mix of the feedback back into the BBD delay signal. So back in the off position, over here we have an external feedback in. Now normally this is um, going to be hardwired, unless you patch something in here. So the signal goes into the BBD, it's delayed, and then it's added back into the dry signal within the module. Where the feedback comes in is the BBD signal is then fed back into itself to create the feedback. But if you plug something into here, you can actually bypass it. Now the real purpose for this is so that you can send the BBD out signal, which comes from here, out to, let's say, a VCA. If you feed this out to a VCA and then back into the external feedback in, you can essentially control dynamically the signal or the feedback coming back in externally, which is actually a pretty neat little feature. Um, so that's the feedback. Now, right below there, we have the mix. And with the mix section, it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. Um, all the way to the clockwise position, we have all BBD signal. It might be a little bit small to see, but down here it says BBD. So all the way clockwise is BBD only, and all the way counterclockwise is original signal only. Right here, you're going to have the mix out. So this is going to give you whatever mix setting you have here, and this is going to be your output for it. The switch here to the left of the mix out is going to be determining the polarity of the BBD signal going back into the original. So in the plus position or positive position, you have a positive 
DBD level going back into the original. In the middle position, it's turned off. And in the minus or negative position, you have a negative mix of the BBD signal going back into the original. Now this port to the left of the polarity is going to allow you to send only the BBD signal out, not the mix out, but your BBD straight out. Send this out to a filter, phaser, um, any other type of audio effect. Hope you enjoyed this description and hope it uh, shed a little bit of light. Coming up fairly soon, I'll be putting out a actual demo where you get to hear some sounds on this particular module, uh, going over some of the features that we discussed, like uh, patching in a CV into the delay clock and hearing what that sounds like, changing the polarity, hearing what that sounds like. Uh, won't be able to demonstrate the CV out. Don't have two BBD modules yet, but maybe I'll work on that. Uh, we may even test out the external feedback in in the second portion, but don't quote me on that. And then, of course, we'll demonstrate BBD out.